If I may ask now, uh, Ambassador Jan Sørensen, uh, United Nations Resident Coordinator in Romania, to prepare us for the lecture, which will come very quickly afterwards. Thank you very much. I want to uh, be brief because I think we're all looking forward to hear uh, what the Crown Prince has to say. <clears throat> it's a great honor that we have uh, you with us today, uh, um, Crown Prince H uh, Håkon of Norway, who is a distinguished uh, actor in development himself and uh, uh, also from, from his studies. And we're very pleased in UNDP uh, uh, of your commitment and you are agreeing to be our goodwill ambassador and with a special focus on the MDGs. <clears throat> We're also lucky uh, to have with us a distinguished panelist uh, of uh, discussions after the keynote speaker and then uh, questions and answers. A very warm welcome from my side to our audience of uh, government and uh, parliamentary representatives, the UN family, representatives of civil society, the business sector, media, and not least to academic, uh, the academic audience of faculty and students in political science and international affairs. <clears throat> um, the timing of this lecture is for us particularly significant and here I'm not referring to the fact that there were presidential elections uh, yesterday, but to the fact that Romania is going through a transition from, in the perspective of development, a recipient to a donor country and it's very interesting to explore, and I think also seen through the prism of dignity and responsibility, what this means for a country, um, the development process, both when you are a recipient and when you are a donor country. <clears throat> the transition that Romania is going through is taking place against the backdrop of an enormous international financial and economic crisis where Romania is one of the most severely affected countries in Europe which is experiencing a very sharp drop from being one of the countries with the highest uh, rate of growth to one of the countries now with the, the biggest decline in the rate of growth. This also has the potential of reversing very, very, uh, otherwise very, very impressive gains that Romania has achieved uh, since the revolution and not least since the adoption of the Millennium Declaration and the Millennium Development Goals from 2000, where Romania really has a lot of achievement and has um, surpassed the goals that were set by the international uh, community for each country to adopt and has set itself more ambitious uh, targets, notably in such areas where Romania had very big challenges such as uh, maternal health, uh, child mortality, um, expansion of access to educational opportunities, sustainable uh, environmental development, and so on. The threat is if these achievements uh, are, are challenged by the uh, economic crisis. And of course, another threat that is uh, raised by, by this crisis is Romania's role as a donor itself. And uh, I'm sharing with others here you know, my regret that one of the first things to be cut when the crisis set in was the development uh, budget. Uh, I'm sure uh, this will soon be, be reversed because in, in my view, and I have to say this very loud and clearly, this is a very short-sighted and poor investment, even in a crisis, because development budget is a relative portion of total GDP. And uh, the burden of meeting it is the, is the same, is equitable, uh, depending on, you know, no matter what your economic situation is. But the crisis certainly underscores the continuous challenge in Romania of bridging gaps because behind the achievements are very significant gaps in Romania between urban and rural populations, between the highest income groups and the lowest income groups, and particularly for uh, the issue of social inclusion of the most vulnerable in society. So the economic crisis, of course, poses a threat also to uh, Romania's nascent engagement in international development cooperation. And actually, um, <clears throat> as I said, the, the, the aid budget was one of the first to be, uh, to be affected. It's very legitimate to ask, as people could ask, you know, uh, 
why should we give money when uh, the government has to uh, now apply for a support package from the International Monetary Fund and the European Union when we don't have enough money in our state budget to also uh, you know, engage in helping poor people in other countries? It's a very legitimate uh, question. Actually, um, we, we did together with uh, our partners in the government a survey of attitudes in the public of this issue and, and they showed, perhaps surprisingly for many, quite a widespread support and understanding of uh, the Romanian public of the need uh, of Romania to meet its obligations, uh, to meet its uh, responsibilities as a donor country, as part of its uh, membership of the European Union and uh, you know, a readiness to take this on. I'm reminded of a, a campaign that was done in another new EU member uh, country um, by, by UNDP uh, on this issue of trying to raise the awareness in the public and, and the slogan there was, you know, for many parts of people in the majority of uh, world's countries, the, our country is paradise and the same can be said uh, about about Romania, uh, and Romania has very, very significant uh, achievements uh, in, in the last decades. In fact, the very term donor-recipient is misleading. It suggests that it's a one-way street, one who gives and one who receives. In fact, experience has shown that it's much more a two-way street, where the benefits are often as big to the donor as to the recipients. And why is that? A country that engages in international development cooperation uh, develops its uh, engagement with other countries, it develops friendly relations, it opens markets, it contributes to peace and security regionally, globally. Uh, it opens up the market for its own institutions, specialists, stakeholders to become active in international development cooperation and have this uh, engagement come back and have a, a stimulating effect on the national economy. I think these concepts, and we've been very pleased to, to work on these concepts uh, with our partners in, in Romania, they are taking, taking root, but there's still a, a lot of uh, achievements that can be made. This is an example of an engagement with the, with the, uh, mainly with the intellectual and like academic community as we just heard from the Vice Rector, Romanian uh, universities, uh, the most uh, largest and important universities, are now engaged in this process of opening up development studies uh, for uh, students of uh, international relations and political science. Um, this is a, an early step towards Romania becoming uh, an active and effective donor. And I would like to uh, end by saying I believe that Romania has, uh, contrary to maybe a lot of the discourse where you hear where Romania is comparing standards in Romania with those of the uh, old EU member states and often say, well, we have so far to catch on. I actually think Romania has, uh, and, and I really believe that very strongly, uh, a strong comparative advantage as, as, a, as a new donor. It has an enviable geopolitical uh, situation as the gateway to the Black Sea, to the Middle East, uh, to Central Asia. Uh, but it also has something uh, that the old EU member states does not have. It has fresh and recent, very, very relevant experience in transforming Romania from a communist society to a modern, open, democratic uh, society based on the rule of law and the dynamis dynamism of the markets. Uh, these are exactly the experiences that uh, other countries that are aspiring to achieve what Romania has achieved are looking for and I believe the knowledge, the experience and the resources are there in Romania to engage forcefully in development cooperation in the future. So thank you very much for coming and as, uh, as you I'm sure I'm looking very much forward to the lecture. Thank you.